a lot of questions we get are about bar and chain oil. I know when I was a kid, my father used to save the uh, oil when he changed the oil in the car and use that the, for bar and chain oil for the saw, which was not a good thing because now you were taking dirty oil and, and immediately putting that in a saw, putting dirty oil in a saw, which is supposed to be act as a lubricant. So what you want to do is you want to use a good bar and chain oil. So there's two grades. There's a spring, summer, fall oil, which is what this is. It's a straight 30 weight. And they also have a winter oil, which is a 10 weight. The special thing about bar and chain oil is, I'm going to put a little bit on my finger here. So it has a tackifier, so it's sticky. When you go to pull it apart, you can see strings of oil come with it. And what that does is, because the chain's moving in anywhere from 6,000 to 13,000 RPM, it helps that oil stay on the chain so it stays there and lubricates it. Otherwise, the saw would just keep throwing it right off. So 30 weight is for three seasons. Most of the time, the bars are... It's not marked as to what it is, but it will say if it's winter oil, it will say cold weather, or it will say winter oil. So another question we get a lot is, when often should you check the bar and chain oil? Uh, your owner's manual is going to say every time you refuel. And it's really a good habit to get into, because then it, if you forget once or twice, you could easily run out of bar and chain oil and not even know it, and burn up your bar and chain. If you at least refill it every time you refill the fuel, then you know that it's going to be full every time you use it. Something else I should probably mention is a lot of bars have a grease hole up here for this, this front sprocket that's up here. Uh, rule of thumb is, if you're going to grease it, grease it every time you use a saw or never grease it. The reason you do that is because if this hole, when this hole fills up with dirt after multi-uses, when you go to grease it, you're gonna, that grease is going to take all that dirt, it's going to push it into the bearing. You don't want to do that. Most modern bars do not have an oiling hole anymore. Because these are permanently greased bearings. Just make sure. If you do have an oiling hole, either do it every time or don't do it at all. So, as you see, we're working on this Makita saw. One of the things you always want to do on a battery saw is you always want to pull the batteries out while you're doing any kind of maintenance on the saw. Very easy to accidentally hit it, hit the trigger, and get the chain to move. So, it would be the same as if you're draining all the fuel out of your gas saw, if you disconnected a spark plug, or something like that. So, you always want to take the batteries out just as a safety precaution. Okay, so just to show you some of the debris that does accumulate in the saw, I happen to have a Makita battery saw here that has a lot of use on it. And this is the kind of debris and buildup that we're talking about that you need to clean out. There's oiling holes in here that oil this bar. You have to make sure that those oil holes are all clear. So what you want to do is just take your brush and just brush away as much of this stuff as you can. If you want to take the bar and chain off, then do it. That's great. Just clear this out. Make sure this is all clean. You want to clean out around the driver here. Uh, you'll also want to take your clutch cover and clean out all the debris that's in the clutch cover. Once it's all clean, make sure wipe it do the best you can and reassemble it. Okay. So after you've done your cleaning, you've got everything cleaned out. I've wiped this out with a little WD-40. At least try and get it this clean. Once you get your chain back and you've had it sharpened or you're replacing it with a brand new chain, what you want to do is you want to always let the chain get lubricated up. And the best way to do that is take a simple baggie. You can either use a quart size or a gallon size like this. You want to put the chain in the bag. Take some of your bar oil and put it in, the bar, in, the, in here. Wrap it tight so that the chain is completely saturated in oil. Seal the bag up and let it sit. And let it sit half a day is fine. Overnight is better. Let as much of that oil get out of all those little orifices, all those little oiling holes that are in the chain. And when you go to put it back on the saw, it'll be lubricated right from start up. So once you've done that, bring the chain back out. It's going to be pretty oily. Just take a, take a rag and just do a very slight wipe. All right, so we had this electric saw. We took the bar and chain off. It showed you all the stuff that was on the inside, how to get all cleaned up. We have the inside of the cover cleaned up. Now we need to put the saw back together. So what you want to do is take our bar. We're going to we're going to rotate the bar this time. We're going to put it on with the logo upside down so he gets wear on both sides of his bar. Once we got the chain lined up, put the chain on the sprocket, put it through. We want to make sure that our alignment pin is where it's supposed to be. Here's our alignment pin and this one is in this is right here in the head. So we want to make sure that goes on. Every time I rotate this little knob, it moves the alignment pin back. So once I get it lined up with the hole, I can put everything back together. I want to start locking it down, but I want to tighten it all the way. I just want to snug it up. Once I get it snugged up, I have the automatic thumb screw here. 
and you'll see as I push this thumb screw up, the chain's coming up in tension. So again, we switched the bar upside down because we had wear before. You always have wear on the bottom of the bar because that's the side you're always cutting. So we turn the bar upside down so we get equal wear. So every time we replace the chain on this, or we sharpen a chain, we should always want to turn the bar upside down. So once we have it in place, we want to hold the nose of the bar up, check our tension, still a little bit loose. So we want that to just, just barely come out of the groove in the middle of the bar, and we want it to snap back. So that's actually right where I want it. So I can go ahead and I can finish tightening up, make sure everything's tight, and our bar's back on. You want to make sure that it, with that loose, we have free moving of the chain, and with the brake on, the, the chain is stopped. And our installation is complete.